the runner up of uh, Ghost Style and Dominic Abati. Dominic, thanks so much for taking this time today. Um, What's going on? Well, we're not here to talk about Survivor. Um, we're here to talk about the Challenge USA. You are a cast member on that show, which is on July 6 on CBS. And Dom, I think that most people watching this would think, um, you know what? This guy, we would have seen him on Survivor, not the Challenge. Uh, how did this happen? So um, I was just going about things, going about my day, going about my life. And this past December, out of nowhere, I got a call asking me if I'd be interested in this challenge spinoff show. I've seen the challenge. I used to watch road rules back in the day, real world. I knew of it. Uh, I didn't really think it was something I'd ever do, but I think, um, you know, just living my life, doing the same repetitive things at my job, although I'm blessed, love my job. I think everyone likes to break free every once in a while if they have the opportunity to do so. So I looked at this as a moment in my life where I could maybe get away for a few weeks and do something. And and more important than the uh, the adventure of it is that the odds of winning a large sum of money they don't come around like this when the numbers are so small. Like if you were to play the lotto, you got a one in 10 million shot at hitting, but here it's like a one in 20 something shot of hitting. And that's how I looked at it on survivor. And that's how I look at it here as well, which is why I, I uh, definitely want to not miss this opportunity because anytime I can potentially win a large sum of money with odds that are in my favor like this, where they're such a small uh, number of people involved, I'm, I'm here for it. Let's go. So when you say the odds were in your favor, like obviously looking at the challenge, I mean, first of all, Survivor is a very physical show, no doubt about it. But you look at the challenge, the challenge is known for their stunts. They're just extreme physical nature. So how do you view yourself, I guess, going into this house? Are you a pretty active guy? Are you um, <laughs> physically um, stronger than the average guy? Like where, where would you well, put yourself? All right. I'm not going to say odds were in my favor in this cast itself. Okay. I had really, I've only heard whispers of some of the people that were going to be on the show, but I'll be honest with you. When I finally met everyone, intimidation crept in real fast. There are some physical specimens on this cast. And I immediately went into somewhat of a panic mode. But at the same time, I do have quite a bit of confidence in my abilities. I'm not going to look the most fit out there. I know that. I'm older. I'm 43. I'm having, I'm, I'm like 215 pounds doing this show. You know, these guys are, are physique freaks. I mean, in amazing shape, but looks can be deceiving. All right. I'm just telling you. And I, even though don't look it, I've been very active, especially the last 10 years. I used to be really out of shape, very heavy, 270 something pounds. And in the last like 10 to 12 years, I'd say I really started to take my health a little more serious. I dropped a bunch of weight, 50, 60 pounds. I fluctuate between 200, 215, you know, whatever, depending on the season. Um, but all that time, I've continued a pretty vigorous workout regimen, CrossFit, a lot of running I'm into. So, like I said, I'm not going to look the most fit out there, but I think um, push comes to shove. I could probably hang with these guys. So you just mentioned that maybe a little bit of panic set in uh, for you. Did that kind of change your mindset at all when you're in there? Did you change your strategy? I know you're a big poker player. Obviously, you're known for your cunning abilities on Survivor. Like, did you have to kind of switch more to that role or what? Well, this is tough because the challenge definitely has a survivor element in it where you are going to have to strategize and build somewhat of an alliance with a certain number of people out there, especially knowing that, you know, it's not like going to tribal council where they just vote you out and then you go home. This is like if you could potentially get voted into an elimination and now it's on you to fight for your, your right to stay in the house, your physical and mental abilities are the only thing that are going to keep you in this game if you get sent into elimination. So it is important 
that I'm not going up against some of these physical specimens, which in turn means I need to develop the right relationships with the right people as quickly as possible. So that was definitely something that I had to navigate. It was a challenge for me to do that. Um, and, you know, sometimes it may or may not have worked out, but, you know, we'll see. But yeah, definitely seeing some of the people that I was going to be going up against from a physical standpoint was super intimidating, but I also knew I was one of the smartest people out there and I'd figure out a way to maybe hopefully get out of these situations. So you talk about developing relationships. Obviously, there's a ton of survivors on this cast, but you've never actually played with any of them, except for your good friend, Wendell, who you played against on Ghost Island, has played against several of them. They were all on Winners of War. Uh, you had Tyson, Ben, and Sarah, who are on Challenge USA, who also played against Wendell. Did you kind of leverage that relationship you had with Wendell to get in with them? Or did you know these guys beforehand, just through the survivor community? Yeah, I knew Sarah, Tyson and Ben all prior to this. I've met them all in person. I do have somewhat of a relationship with them um, going into the game. The remaining players I, I didn't, except for Tasha. I think I met Tasha once at a charity event. But besides that, Danny, Shan, um, who else was out there? I'm terrible. But uh, the remaining Survivor players that were out there, I did not, oh, Desi. Desi I never met. Um, I never met them in person, but anytime you're on one of these shows, it's an immediate thing that you're just part of the family. You're, you know, you don't have to have met or even spoken, but when you come together, you know, you've shared the same experience and therefore you should have somewhat of a relationship with these people, whether that's true or not in the challenge, we'll find out, but it's definitely something that in the normal circumstances, if you run into a survivor on the street that you've never met, but you've also played, you can guarantee that you guys are going to become friends real fast. Dom, you mentioned that there was some real like physical beasts that you saw when you walked in there. Um, now, just looking at the survivors on there, was there someone in particular that you were like, oh, I got to play against this guy or this girl? Um, well, the girls are, are freaks. I mean, Desi, you, you can't believe the physique on this girl and their abilities. They're just so determined. At, like I've watched seasons of the challenge in the past and I see a lot of people like question whether or not to go through with doing a challenge. There's a lot of mind over matter that gets the best of people. The, the contestants here, you know, Early on, he, like I just couldn't believe how determined everyone seemed to be that nothing was going to stop anyone from doing anything. From a physical standpoint, though, like I said, uh, Danny McRae, former Dallas Cowboy, Tyson, who's an ultra endurance athlete. I mean, these are people that are going to give you a run from your mo for your money on the survivor side. And then if you step out of the survivor world and even start to th think about Love Island and the Big Brother people, Cinco and uh xavier and kylan i mean these people are just super intimidating just meeting them and seeing their sheer size and their physique and it just so it is a very intimidating thing for a 43 year old construction supervisor who's slightly out of shape to uh you know know that you're gonna eventually be going head to head with some of these people so speaking about head to head i mean the challenge is really known for their eliminations it's a staple of the show um, some of the best moments from the franchise are in the elimination. Um, so for you, Dom, what kind of elimination are you looking for? Are you like hoping for a puzzle, kind of more of an endurance thing? Or are you looking to get into the sand to wrestle a pull out of someone's hands? I mean, out of the gate, seeing the competition, I don't want to pull wrestle any of these people. I'm more of an endurance guy. I'll do something for five hours. Slow and steady. I'm good with that all day. Some puzzles I hit, some puzzles I miss. So it really depends on where my brain is in that moment, how much sleep I got the night before. But I'm an, an endurance guy. I, like I said, I'll run back and forth and carry something all day, all night. Doesn't matter for me. That's, that's kind of my wheelhouse where I prefer to be. Are there any other survivors that you would like to see on this show um, that maybe weren't cast for this season? I mean, you're connected to the community. You've played with some real physical people like Wendell, for example, or some like cunning strategic people. 
Is there someone that you think would be a great addition to the challenge? I mean, I would have loved to play this game with Wendell. All right. Out of the gate. And I know that he did get a call, but he had some knee surgery he had to take care of. So he couldn't make it out there. But I was bummed because even though him and I, uh, we did really well on our season of Survivor together. And most people think that I would try to get rid of Wendell as soon as possible so that I don't lose to him again. That's actually quite the opposite. When something works, you stick to it. And my relationship and my working relationship with Wendell on Survivor was so it was just so good. It was so well oiled. And I would I would have hoped to have had a Wendell like situation out there again. As far as someone specific besides Wendell, I can't really think of anyone. I don't you know, there's a lot of great players from the past whom I love uh, on, on the guy side. Uh, Jeremy. Uh, Tony, all the big names you know about poverty, but even like Kellen from my season, I would have loved to have been out there. Laurel, these are people who I, even though may have butt heads within my season, I now have a good relationship with, and I feel like we would work well together. Have you been watching the challenge? Because you did say earlier that you were like a real world road rules fan. Have you been watching the seasons up until you were casted or what? Well, not organically, no. I've seen, uh, I, I used to watch the show organically back in the early 2000s during the early Mark Long days and the road rules. That's when I was kind of into it. And then, I, you know, life caught up and I just started doing things. Wasn't watching as much television. And it wasn't until I got the call that I really dove back into the challenge world and um, saw what it is I've been missing and what it is I may be walking into. And I'm going to be honest with you, I didn't really think this show was for me out of the gate because uh, the MTV version of the show is it's got some rough moments. And as a father, I was concerned the perception of it, having children in school. I certainly didn't want uh, and not to knock anything about the challenge, but it's just a different animal. The MTV version from what we did on the CBS version, it's just kind of different. It's a little more family friendly, I feel like. And once that was explained to me, I was all for it. Uh, but leading up to that point, I was a little concerned that it was not really the, the right fit for me. But uh, I was talked off the ledge. And I'm glad I did it because it really was a more family-friendly version of the show. Let's just leave it like that. <laughs> so what you're saying is we're not going to see Dom partying in a club, maybe getting into a bar fight. There will be no bar fights from this guy and uh, anything else that you know, rambunctious behavior goes on. N none of that. Not only not from me, and but as far as I know, I don't think you're going to see too much of that from any other contestants. I mean, not to say that there weren't beverages and not to say there weren't disputes and not to say there weren't other things. I'll let the show play itself out. I'm just saying it wasn't as as rowdy as the MTV version. Fair enough. Uh, last one for you, Dom. Now, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you this. Are we going to see you back on Survivor? If CBS gives you the call, are you going back on the island? I would say not immediately. Um, I, you know, I didn't get, we, you know, we only filmed the show a few months ago. So I had taken off work only a few months ago. And uh, to have to ask uh, employers and wives and family members to leave again so soon, not realistic. In the future, maybe, hopefully. I love the show. Um, but who knows? Uh, you know, as this, these new seasons come out, you know, a better version of Dom may arise. So they may not need me in the future. Maybe they want the new, the new bigger and better improved Dom. So you never really know what the, what's going to happen. Uh, but I do still love the show dearly. It's uh, always going to have a place in my heart. And if they call, I would love to do it. But like I said, timing will be everything.